Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at using pages as a template builder for students to be able to document their learning in all sorts of ways. Now let's jump into template, uh, jump into pages and create a new document. For this, I'm actually going to use a blank landscape, but I'm also in this video gonna show you how you can take some of the pre-made books that have been created and use them as a template for yourself. So I'm gonna jump into a blank landscape here, and you'll see this sets up exactly the same way as in the other videos of just, it's just a different uh, layout. I'm gonna rename this instantly, and I'm just gonna call this a uh, learning journal. Again, so I know to find it a little bit later. And what I wanna do here is I wanna design this page so that students can use this to document their own learning. And we're also gonna have a look at how I can save this then as a template so that I can use it again later down the line. So the first thing I want to do is start to build this page. Shapes are a great way to do this because you can do all sorts of really, really cool things in terms of your layout. So let's just say I'm just going to quickly build uh, just a title up here, change the color maybe, um, call it my learning. And you can do a lot more from the design point of view, just, you know, I'm doing this fairly quickly at the moment. Um, add something else in here, maybe, you know, I want them to have, uh, you know, the topic or something or an image in this corner. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in terms of how I want to add those things. Uh, I'm just going to add another box by here that might be, I want them to do a bit of writing. So I might change the colour of this. Um, I think something like a, a nice sort of light yellow. This one would be good. Maybe go with a bit of shadow so it stands off the page. You know, uh, that looks quite nice, like a little post-it note or something maybe. Again, I'm going to change the colour of, of this box here. Um, just get behind it. There we go. Uh, let's just keep that yellow as well. Um, so you can see I'm just sort of, sort of building something on my page to do with this. Now, the issue I've got here is that I want this to actually be a picture of something. In fact, this probably should be a little bit bigger because I think it's, it's going to actually be a picture of some of the work that they've uh, created. Um, so it might even be that this would sort of mirror maybe an iPad size or at least, you know, some sort of photo, whether it be landscape um, or portrait. And I want them to put a picture in here. So what I could do is, is write to add picture here. Okay. It doesn't really look great to me. So I'm going to kind of make it a little bit easier because the other thing is if they're going to add a picture in here, they have to remember that they go up here to plus and then they change this. There's a quicker way to do this. So I want this to be a placeholder. Now, if I'd added this as a picture, so if I go to plus, go to photos, uh, choose a, a recent picture that I've, I've put in here. Uh, what can we use for this? Um, let's take this picture of a nice reservoir. If I add that picture, what you can do when you add pictures, if I tap on the paintbrush, is go to image and then choose set as placeholder. Now what that does is it gives you this plus here, so that when you click on it, it opens your camera roll and you can replace the picture that's there. Now the problem is the, the reservoir has no relevance to this page. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out this text and I'm actually gonna turn this into kind of an obvious placeholder. So I'm going to type in camera, oops, apologies, Let's go try that one again, plus, there we go, there's my camera, I'm going to choose that, I'm going to add that down here, and I might sort of stylize this a little bit nicer, uh, I'll put a shadow on that, that's better, maybe a bit of shadow on the camera as well, maybe just choose a different kind of layout, just to give it a little bit of a, a nicer look, I'm actually going to change the colour of that as well. Maybe do a bit of a, a nice gradient in the background. There we go. So we've got a, a bit of a placeholder. But the problem is now, once I link those two together just by tapping on the two and then just tapping group, is that I still don't have that option okay, to turn that into a placeholder because it's not a picture. So here's a quick tip. If I drag my Photos app and have it alongside, 
and I'm going to take that shape that I've created and again tap and hold and drag and drop. If I tap and hold it and do the reverse, what the iPad has done for me is by dropping it into photos is it's turned it into an image. So this one here is a shape, this one here is now an image. And I know that because if I tap on the paintbrush, I can see it's an image and I can change it to a placeholder. Okay, so now I get that little plus in the corner here. So I can delete this one and I can drop this one to wherever I want it on the page. Now, the difference here between the two, as a shape, I could change its dimensions. I could have made it thinner, fatter, etc. As an image, it has its constrained properties. So that's one thing that you have to, to consider. Okay, so you have to think about that. Now, you can turn that off because actually, let's say that I want this to be um, a portrait as opposed to a landscape, but you can see there that it stretches the image, okay? Whereas if I was doing that um, within a shape, it might not have that same effect. So just something to consider there, the, the difference between those approaches, okay? But that's how we can make something as a, as a media placeholder. Over this side then, I want this to be a place where they're gonna do their writing. I'm saying this is their learning, what have they learned, add a picture here, etc. So this is how I've created a very, very basic learning journal. You can be a lot more creative than this I've just got a few minutes in a demo. Now, here's our template. If I tap over here and I go to export and I choose pages template, this is gonna then export this as a learning journal template, which I can add to my template chooser. And that's gonna drop down here on my templates where I can just pick any one of those templates to start a new project. And here we go, it's given me that whole learning journal again, which I can start to build from. So that's a really, really quick and easy way to create um, a page that students can use over and over again. Now, let's take a look at how we can do that in a slightly different way. If you don't want to start the whole design process yourself, if I go back, tap on plus, let's take some of these kind of pre-made books. Yeah, there, there are some lovely design styles in this that we might want to steal. I really like this photo book. I'm going to borrow some of the lovely design features in this and just have a look at what I can do to change this. Now, I could just you know add my text into this and, and change the photos of here to the photos that I want to use. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select the slide and go to Edit Master Page. And I'm going to think, well, actually, do you know what? I, I do like that picture, but I want it to be a little bit smaller and I want it to be up here. Um, I like that text, but I want that to be over here, and I want those two to match. You, you get the idea, right? You just have full control to play around with how you want your page to be set out. I can also tap here and rename it um, and just say this is going to be learning journal page one, whatever. Okay, so it depends on how you want to, to name all of these things. And basically what you're doing is just creating your own template by playing with the master um collage pages to see how you want it to look on the page for your students. So you just go through all of these different things and if you want to create a new one just tap on one, tap duplicate and then you could say oh, actually I want I want exactly the same layout but I want everything to be over this side of the page. Okay to give students a place to put their pictures here. Once you're done tap done and then when you have this plus down the bottom here you'll see that we've got those new pages. Here's that new one I've done and you can see that I've adapted this page slightly differently from what the original was. So again, that's another way to create something for yourself in pages. If I jump out a second, I'm gonna start a new project. I'm gonna to go to some of my templates. You'll see here that I've made several different sort of templates for different things. If I tap on this one uh, here for the plants book that I've created, that whole process was done the same here. Here's lots and lots of different pages that I've built. If I tap on the plus, these are the original pages that I stole to create my book. And then in other books, so if I tap on plus again, you see that I've actually uh, changed some of those template pages. So this one here I'm currently working on uh, for a science scrapbook. Uh, here's the kind of outline that I want, which is again borrowed from an original template. But if I tap on the plus now, I've created my own templates in here. Uh, for different pages that you might want to use. So some with multiple pictures, it's science, so I wanted to show a process. Here's one about recording, here's a whole screen one, here's a calendar of things. So that's the whole process, and they're just templates I've created. I can share this book as a template to students, and then they can create as much as they like. So there we go, that's how we can use templates in our books to create things like learning journals.